So I want to talk about uh, the IK plugins and how, can, how we can improve them. Um, and that talk is uh, essentially should stimulate a discussion and it doesn't present any solutions, uh, but essentially it raises a lot of questions. Um, so consider it as a starting point for, for discussions. Um, so I will um, look at some design flaws I identified at least uh, and suggest improvements for uh, various things. Um, so what is, what is the essential um, application for IK? So we want to find, oops, we don't see everything. No, no. Hmm. Wait a second. No, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> okay, better. So first application uh, is to find solutions uh, for planning. Um, so we give a um, Cartesian goal, and we want to have probably all of the solutions uh, in order to actually grasp um, the object, for example, uh, at a certain Cartesian pose. And the other application is to find a, cl uh, a smooth Cartesian path uh, which typically requires to find the single closest solution to a particular seat, which is our current pose, our current posture. And I think both of them, both these applications, are not very well supported yet by the current API. Um, and additionally, the current API is kind of over complex and confusing. Um, so we do have a lot of very different IK approaches. Um, some going um, yeah, kind of random, some um, explicitly uh, enumerating all the possible solutions um, in a deterministic fashion. And then we have uh, the, the local optimization-based planners like KDL, uh, which uh, yeah, essentially find the closest solution. So both of them have their pros and cons. Um, the deterministic ones, yeah, you can nicely enumerate all the solutions, but maybe it's hard to pick the right one, which is actually close uh, to your current one, uh, to your current posture, because it's maybe not clear what is close. Uh, so we will have a look at that. Um, and on the other hand, um, if you have a local base planner, you might get stuck, of course, in a local minima, because you, or what you do is local gradient descent. Um, so what is the current API looking uh, like? Uh, we essentially have two functions, um, get position AK, <coughs> um, which at least attempts to find the closest uh, solution to a, a particular seed state. But actually, looking in, into the uh, move it source space, uh, this function is only used at one location, and namely in the uh, uh, postmodal state space, uh, which yeah, I found weird. Um, the second function is search position AK, uh, which essentially tries to find um, or tr tries to reseed uh, if the first, att uh, first attempt kind of failed, um, which results in, in finding maybe any solution potential. Um, and this function comes in various variants. Uh, so you can provide consistency, consistency limits in order to kind of avoid the problem of finding any solution, but again, getting close to some seed. Uh, you can also provide solution callback in order to validate whether you're colliding, stuff like this, so that that's typically used uh, in MoveIt. And 
of course, you can combine these two variants, and, and so you have a lot of different uh, variants of, these, uh, of this function. And essentially, only the most generic one is wrapped in robot state set from AK, which is typically used throughout uh, the MoveIt code base. Uh, so only this very last generic function is actually used. Um, so we should try to simplify the, the plugin uh, um, API here and only focus on this very general one, which is then wrapped in, in various variants uh, in Z from AK, for example. Um, oops. Okay. Here it looks good. Uh, so what about these consistency limits? Uh, with these consistency limits, you can essentially per joint specify how far you should be away uh, from your current seed solution. But it's actually not trivial to choose those consistency limits in the right fashion. Uh, so looking at these examples here, um, they generate smooth, uh, smooth motions actually, uh, but because they are going close by uh, a singularity, um, the actual joint uh, motion for these close by Cartesian motions is actually huge, at least for particular joints. Um, so some joints are moving here by 180 degrees. Uh, so choosing small consistency limits might um, suppress that you find the correct solution. So what I argue for, if I can switch to the next slide, I can't. So let's do it this way. Um, <clears throat> so. I argue that this approach using consistency limits, it's actually the wrong approach. Uh, I suggest uh, the following. Um, so in order to yeah, judge whether we have found a good smooth solution from the current seed, let's say we want to go from the green to the uh, yellow solution here, um, is to look at the interpolation in joint space and then validate whether we are still close in Cartesian space. So if we have really very different solutions, we will see them later, uh, and interpolate in joint space, we end up uh, somewhere completely else. Uh, but if we do that here uh, for this indeed closed solution, the end effector pose doesn't change very much. Uh, and that's a completely different approach to the present one, um, which is uh, waiting to be implemented, uh, unfortunately. So. I didn't yet found time for that. Um, but I think we can solve the, the smoothness solution, or uh, the smoothness issue uh, following this approach. And we see at least monthly issues on, on uh, GitHub uh, addressing exactly this smoothness problem. So that's a really urgent problem uh, we should address. Um, and my suggestion is that we kind of provide a utility function which can be used then by all the IK plugins to test this kind of smoothness uh, in the base class. Okay, uh, the next issue is uh, more about kinematic trees. So if we have hands, and uh, our lab has uh, these uh, five-fingered robot hands uh, from Shadow Robot Company, um, so we want to um, yeah, compute IK solutions for the full hand maybe. And the support for that is also not optimal yet. Um, essentially, we do have uh, two variants of search position and get position, which allows to pass in uh, uh, poses uh, for each of the end factors. Um, but then you see here uh, a strange um, API, which su suggests that you get multiple solutions uh, for this get position AK. And indeed, even the source code uh, mentions uh, an ambiguity in this uh, 
um, in this function, um, where it states uh, it's, it's not clear whether this should return multiple solutions for all of those listed um, poses. Um, so having a single end effector and you get uh, uh, corresponding post solution, a case solution for each of them, um, which I think is not really required because you can simply call that function in a loop. Um, and the other is, uh, yeah, should we return uh, a common solution for all these end effectors? And why should get position IK return multiple solutions? Uh, because previously I said that, for position, uh, that function should exactly, call, uh, exactly return the single solution which is closest to the seed. Um, so actually this function was introduced in, in or this variant was introduced in uh, 2015 by the Ross Industrial Consortium, I guess Jorge uh, introduced that. Uh, and it's even not used throughout the MoveIt code base. Um, so I'm not sure whether you guys actually use it. Uh, would be get, uh, would be nice to get some feedback on that. Okay. Um, and the question is, yeah, can we make that more explicitly, maybe, uh, if we want to use this functionality? And actually, which kind of functionality do you need there? Um, Okay, um, my suggestion is to have yeah, similar APIs for both of these functions, uh, returning a single solution in, in both cases. Um, I actually, um, I, later I will state that maybe we explicitly should distinguish these two application cases, returning the single closest solution and returning all the solutions which we kind of find in, in a, a certain amount of time. Okay. Uh, which brings us to redundancy and multiple solutions. Um, so all of the robots we have ex uh, essentially have um, redundancies. Uh, typically, uh, if you have a sixth of a robot, uh, these redundancies are discrete, so you can have different um, up, up, down, left, right solutions. And here you see essentially what I said before. So if you want to change uh, from one of these postures to another one, you essentially move uh, around uh, 180 degrees, or you need to, uh, from, from uh, elbow up to down, you need to essentially stretch your arm uh, straight, go, going into this um, um, boundary uh, singularity, uh, and then come back. Uh, so typically, you don't want to actually um, switch between different solution branches here, because that involves um, really large joint space motions. Um, so that's why it's a discussion point whether we actually need to list all of these different solutions or whether we should stay within a single solution branch all the time, which is essentially given by the initial seed. However, this would raise then the question how we can judge whether we are still in the same solution branch, which is a completely not trivial uh, question at all. At all. Um, the other issue is uh, if you have a redundancy, explicit redundancy in your robot, um, then you have an infinite number of solutions and you need to explicitly um, maybe discretize uh, this yeah, redundancy space in order to list all of the possible solutions. Um, there is some support in um, uh, IK phase uh, for that. Uh, and actually only this uh, get position IK function introduced by uh, Ross Industrial has some support for, for re uh, returning uh, multiple solutions. So that's not yet there uh, at all and not used uh, at all and move it, but maybe indeed for, for um, finding potential postures uh, for a Cartesian goal, that might be an interesting application, which is not yet used in, in move it yet. Um, another option is to, to explicitly resolve um, 
the ambiguities, uh, which is termed redundancy resolution. Uh, and there are possible, uh, multiple possible criteria, uh, so you can try to um, stay close to an optimal or preferred pose, uh, or try to avoid uh, joint limits uh, as much as you can, which essentially is, uh, results in an optimal pose, which is in the center of your joint uh, range. Um, you can try to minimize uh, the joint velocities, which is essentially uh, the same as using the Jacobian pseudo inverse to solve that problem. Uh, you can minimize or maximize various other terms, uh, which are essentially some kind of scalar cost, cost functions. Um, if we do this, uh, yeah, we, we try to compute a scalar cost function, and then the question ra uh, arises, uh, how do we weight different joint contributions? And as you can see in this uh, example here, uh, where I weight uh, the different joints um, differently over the time, maybe I can restart the video as well. I can't. Um, so in the very beginning, uh, the, the arm joint was, um, had a small weight, uh, not essentially contributing to the motion. Um, if I increase the arm weight, um, the, the whole uh, motion here is generated essentially also by the arms. Um, or I can uh, reduce the, the arm contribution and only focus on the fingers or the wrist here. Uh, so giving the joints different weights is essentially a very useful thing in order to create very different behaviors with essentially the same um, computation math method. And I would propose to, to have a generic method uh, to kind of provide this mechanism, um, so to provide these um, weights throughout, uh, for example, YAML params uh, in our kinematic uh, YAML file uh, in order to steer this process. And actually it would be nice to change those parameters dynamically um, uh, for each different call uh, to, to the inverse kinematics, maybe. But I'm not sure how we can actually pass those parameters then from the various locations uh, from the source code. Okay, um, we are still going through the, the current API, essentially, um, and there's also kinematic query options, which uh, adds a, a whole bunch of other options as well. Um, First of all, there's uh, the discretization method and uh, that's redundant joints, which is essentially only relevant for a very small subset of, of um, particular IK so, uh, uh, approaches, here namely IK fast, which yeah, unfortunately can only solve uh, six of problems and uh, for redundant robots you explicitly need to specify which is the redundant joint, um, but as you have seen uh, essentially in this video here, there's no particular uh, redundant joints, uh, which um, so all of the joints are contributing to the singularity space or to, the, to this solution space. Uh, and you cannot actually pick one particular joint. Of course, you can choose one of those joints and fix them. Um, which fixes the particular solution here, uh, but I don't think that's a very good approach. Um, but my key point is that we should move such very specific parameters, uh, which are only specific to certain uh, IK approaches um, to the kinematics YAML of this particular solver uh, and not kind of pollute um, the general IK API with these uh, parameters. Um, search resolution is another parameter which can be, uh, in principle, uh, given for, for every specific joint, but in practice, uh, we have only one parameter in, in the YAML which we can essentially change, which is also not really perfectly matching to each other. Uh, and then we have lock redundant joints uh, which was used in, in KDL uh, in order to kind of yeah, lock joints uh, in a similar fashion as, as IK fast does uh, if you have redundant robots. 
um, but it's not essentially used anymore. And then we have a return approximate solution, which is essentially um, only used in the KDL-based plugins so far, uh, at least in, in the standard plugins uh, which we have, uh, and which returns yeah, any, uh, any uh, non-converged solution uh, without uh, how much time I have. Okay. Uh, so my argument is um, that we should drop that uh, and go for uh, generic tolerances and make tolerances explicit um, so this approximate solution doesn't consider a specific tolerance but just returns any solution which was not converged, uh, no matter how far it is off uh, from our goal. Um, so if we grasp objects, um, typically we don't care um, the exact, uh, uh, exact Cartesian post, but we, we tolerate um, maybe um, rotation about the object, we tolerate uh, uh, position tolerances and stuff like this. And actually we do have a mechanism to specify this, uh, namely constraint messages. Uh, so uh, for the position constraint, I, I um, listed here the, the uh, concrete uh, message type um, or the others look very similar. So we can do specify um, already um, tolerances, but they are not used in, in the IK plugins. And, and my suggestion is to actually um, generalize the IK uh, API in order to use some kind of these constraints. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the other point is, well, what about uh, having multiple, um, multiple goal constraints in parallel? Uh, what you can do, of course, is simply sum up all the different cost functions. Uh, so you want to get to a certain position and you want to have a certain orientation of your end effector and all of these contribute uh, individual cost functions and you can weight them. Um, but if the different tasks are conflicting, then you end up in a solution which uh, doesn't satisfy any of them. Uh, and there's a better approach, uh, which is called stack of tasks, which allows you to um, order all these uh, tasks by prior priority and you essentially solve the subordinate tasks only in, this, in the subspace um, left by the uh, higher level tasks. Um, and it would be great if we could uh, find a, a way to, to include this also in our AK IPA, which maybe calls uh, for another level of, of constraints uh, where we list several um, constraints. Uh, and you can do a lot of other stuff uh, interesting, for example, um, relative motions. Um, and this, that brings me to the summary. So essentially I'm proposing to simplify the API, only keeping essentially two functions, get closest IK and get multiple IK if we want to have that, um, which is more or less the most general um, function, uh, or most general, uh, keeps only the most general version of those functions which we do now, ha now have which is a zoo maybe of 10 different um, functions that need to be implemented. Uh, and yeah, all the rest is done then by corresponding wrappers in, in robot stage. And what I also should say, suggest is having a generic distance measure uh, which computes the closeness uh, of two IK solutions uh, using this interpolation in, in, in uh, joint space. And that's it. Thank you. And as I was watching this, I was really considering like all of the use cases that really depend on the, these APIs. Like, if you could have just like multiple solutions, then OMPL can then use that to be populating its graph differently. And it's I think these deep dives into the APIs that really enable move it to be very focused, but also be able to support so many things. Uh, 
So I, I really enjoyed it. But maybe we have time for a quick question. Yeah, I think this is great work. Definitely need a new API. Uh, ROS2 is the perfect time for it. Uh, actually, two, two notes. Oh, a comment first is uh, you, you mentioned the ability to put multiple poses in at once and how that's not needed because you can just call the function twice. Uh, just a thought. That was actually work with uh, Kei Okada's lab I did where if you have a humanoid with a torso, you want to be able to control the torso for t dual arm grasping. And so there are use cases for humanoids where you want to have two arms and it, they are actually the same kinematic chain, if that makes sense. Well, in that case, uh, you want to solve for multiple anti-factors at once, right? You, you, what but you want to get is a single solution for, for all these anti-factors. But they have an overlapping chain because they're... Yeah, no problem. Okay. So in, in, in these examples here, where is it? You have an overlapping chain as well. So, so the, the fingers share yeah. uh, the whole arm, right? Okay. And then my, my question is, uh, when can you propose this new API in a pull request? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Great. Thank you again. So I think the question is here um, how we do involve the whole community. Um, because there are lots of IK plugins out there, and if you change that, um, all of them will be affected. Uh, and the question is also, did I cover uh, all the use cases? I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have other use cases in mind, please um, raise your hand now. Mm -hmm.